When we think about what analytics are, some people mistakenly think, oh, it's just stats. It's way more than that. Help us understand the distinction. Well, analytics by its definition is the information that you get from analyzing data and statistics. So it's taking really high level information and there's, there's tracking companies now, third party data suppliers that work with a lot of the teams that really track a ton of information, very granular data set. Uh, the largest being a company out of Montreal, Sport Logic, which works with uh, most of the teams in the National Hockey League. So they take all of this information and they find ways to make it actionable, like we talk about for teams in the NHL, to improve what they can do on the ice, improve a player acquisition. And you look at some of the different metrics that they're looking at, you can kind of, on a very base level, separate it into two things. What happens when a player is on the ice and what is that individual player contributing while he's on the ice? So we start on the left side. When a player's on the ice, the shot attempts, which way are they going? The scoring chances, the expected goals, which way are they going? How good is the opposition that he's playing? Is it someone getting the tough matchups? A guy like Mark Edward Vlasic getting, eating the tough minutes. And what's the strength of his teammates? And then finally, zone starts. How often are you hemmed in your own end? Are you getting a lot of starts in the offensive zone? You look at a guy like Zach Wierenski, really offensive, gifted defenseman, starts a lot in the offensive zone. So that's the, you know, your contributions while you're on the ice. Where you really get into the nitty gritty is the individual metrics. And now we're identifying what these individual players do. Getting into the offensive zone with possession of the puck, exiting your zone with possession, passing metrics. How good are you as a passer? How good are you at passing pucks? into the middle of the ice, into the slot, stretch passes, outlet passes, really defining a lot of these things. Uh, defensively as well, we can take a look at stick checks, block passes, how active is your stick. Victor Hedman, one of the best this year, he won the Norris Trophy. So a really good way to quantify an individual's defensive impact on the game. And then finally, possession success rates are also key um, in terms of how often a player has the puck, how often does he make a good play with it. Uh, an example I'll use is a guy like Eric Carlson. A lot of turnovers every year. Doesn't mean he's not good with the puck. He has the puck more than anybody. Mm. And when you actually break it down into a percentage of how often does he make a good play with it, it's really high. Mm. So that's where you start getting into the granularity of this data and you can start, you know, finding these insights and, and helping you make better decisions. To help people understand, you talked about all these different things that you're going to try to track in a game. Now, is that done through like a computer algorithm or is someone manually watching games saying, okay, pass, check, uh, stick, check, deny? Like there's, there's, there's hundreds of things happen every five seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's a computer program that manages to track most of these things for the big companies. There's not a human being smart enough to do this. Or, or, or <laughs> well, you're here for a reason. Well, yeah, you're <laughs> here for a reason. I'm not sitting at home charting this stuff, trust me. Like, Mike Kelly could not do that. Uh, um, but no, it is done. And this is, this is what's so great is that you know, even four or five years ago, a lot of teams were using the play sequence files that are uh, available through NHL.com. Now you have these tracking companies, like the one that I mentioned, for instance, they use computer vision tracking systems. They use machine learning. A lot of it's automated. There's still a human element to it to make sure you're getting the most accurate data, but it's done in, in, in almost real time. Yeah. And now we're at a point where teams can literally use this information in an intermission mm. and you know, balance what they want to do in the next period based off that report that they get. So it's, it's come a long way just based on how good the technology is even in the last couple of years also computers being involved makes it consistent Take yes yeah. human element your your shift is different than my shift but we're trying to track it manually computers count everything the same unless the computer goes rogue 2001 <laughs> a space odyssey amazing <laughs> but that's not what we're here for